Hi guys and welcome to another unboxing and first impressions. Today we're unboxing a legendary watch that's been a fan favorite among watch enthusiasts on forums and everyone for years, maybe even like a decade now. So let's open it and see it. It's one of the most affordable mechanical chronographs you can buy and a really good one because it's a column wheel chronograph. If you know anything about mechanical chronographs, column wheel is the holy grail. So let's open this box. We got an additional strap, some writing in Chinese, which I cannot read. You get a very nice, I believe they call them pelican boxes or whatever for carrying watches. And here it is. Yet another additional strap and the watch itself on a NATO strap. Here we have the cloth and probably the warranty of the watch itself. Let me move away the box. Let's try to open this. It's really sealed well. 1963. Yes, I got the Seagull 1963. This is also the instruction manual. So let's slide this out and see the watch itself. Okay, I always wanted this watch ever since I saw it the first time, but never got the chance to buy one. I mean, always like postponed, bought something else, and here it is, finally. Let me just peel off the protective film and here it is the Chinese Air Force chronograph 1963 now this is the unofficial Seagull one because uh, at first only Seagull was making them because they were the ones who originally made it in 1963 when the Chinese purchased the Venus 175 movement and all the tooling and blueprints from the Venus a Swiss company that was trying to sell that equipment to fund a, a, a new movement they were developing. Chinese bought it, they at first offered it to the Russians, but the Russians declined because they already copied the Venus 150, which is the Strela chronograph. And then Chinese bought the 175, they kind of improved it, they added, I believe, two more jewels, and created this, the Seagull ST19, or in this variant, ST1901. A manual wind column wheel chronograph, that has, I believe, 42 hours of power reserve, and that's about it. So as you can see, that's the one. Now, at first, only the official ones existed, and it was the most affordable mechanical chronograph you could buy. But then, with time, uh, they started developing for, I mean, they started selling and producing for other companies that used the same movement, the same case, pretty much everything is the same. And when that happened, Seagull actually moved the prices of their official one up. So now the official one is about four to five hundred dollars while these unofficial ones, although they're basically the same watch using the same movement, the same case, everything, uh, they're about two hundred dollars. For, so for two hundred dollars, which usually doesn't even give you like an automatic movement with a sapphire crystal, you get a manual wind column wheel chronograph and you have two variants, the acrylic one, which is more close to the original, and this one. This one is this one comes with a sapphire. The difference is that the acrylic one doesn't have this metal bezel, but the acrylic goes all the way to the case. It kind of looks cooler, but if you know me, I want my watches to look uh, good even when I wear them, and I'm pretty rough with my watches, so the acrylic one, just like my amphibia, would probably look like it would look like garbage after a year of wear. This one is not going to have that problem. Now, I also opted for the clear case back so that I can take a look at this movement because it is a very, very beautiful movement. Manual wind, it does come with a lot of decorations, blued screws, although these are probably not heat blued but painted, but still you cannot, you can't deny that this really does look impressive. Let me take off this protective film as well, if I manage to catch it. There. Wow. Now this is the unboxing and first impression, so I will save some details for the review, including the history of the 1963 chronograph and macro shots of both this beautiful movement 
and the watch as a whole. Now, I'll leave a link to the store that I got this from because they agreed to give me a couple of coupons that brings the price down. I'll leave the coupons and the link to the AliExpress store in the description. They offer a 38 and a 40 millimeter version. I went with the 38 because it's more close to the original. They both come with an acrylic or a sapphire, it's up to you. The price difference is, I believe, $3. Like the acrylic one is $202 and the sapphire is $205 or 207 something like that. So a ridiculously small amount to pay to get a very serious upgrade. It does change the style of the watch somewhat, but it doesn't ruin it. I actually do like the look of this bezel. I prefer the acrylic one. But because of the practicality, I went with this one. What I always loved about the Seagull are the colors. This red seconds hand and the blue uh, hands on, on the rest of the watch. Very cool. So let's try to wind the movement and get it going. You probably can't hear it, but it's very soft when it comes to winding. Reminds me of my vintage Doxa. And as you can see, the watch is moving. So let's wind it all the way. Then we're going to start the chronograph. I'm going to try it on my wrist, but being 38, it should probably look perfect. Okay, so let's start it. Very nice and snappy action. Let's stop it. And let's reset it. Very nice. So the advantage of a column wheel, even though the column wheel chronographs are usually reserved for high-end watches because they're much harder to produce than regular, you know, the ones that have that just have the, the prongs that push, uh, uh, levers, should I say, that push things back into place, is that with a column wheel, the column wheel is doing all the action. You're just, by pressing different buttons, you're switching what it does, but because of that, the start, stop, and reset, they all have the same resistance and the same, the same action. When you have that classical lever or chronograph, sometimes the start and stop can have a different feel to the reset because when you're resetting you're pushing everything in place and here the column wheel does all the pushing and you just like move it around so this is a more premium version of a mechanical chronograph and the funny thing is that it's like in a 200 dollars watch even my omega speedmaster the moon watch originally came with a column wheel chronograph the one that went to the moon but after that they went with the la with the one that has those uh, that's not a column wheel chronograph because it was easier to produce and some say it's actually more reliable because it's more robust and simpler. So this is a more premium chronograph than my Speedmaster. It has an amazing history as well, but it's a fraction of the price. It's like the price of one link for the bracelet of the Speedmaster. That's why I love this thing. Okay, so let's put back the strap and put it on my wrist. And that's gonna be it for today. So, this is a NATO. I usually don't like NATO straps. If you follow my channel, you know that. But this one, I have to admit, does look cool on this NATO. So, we're probably going to leave it like that. Okay. So, here it is. On my 6.7 inch wrist, 38 millimeters in diameter. As you can see, it looks pretty much perfect. Very nice. Now, this is one of the reasons I don't like NATO because they raise the watch quite a bit, but that's why they sent these additional straps. So we'll be switching around to see which one I like the most. Although I do love the look of it with this the most. Very nice. So like I said, check out in the description and stay tuned for the full review with macro shots. And there I'll probably cover the, the history of this chronograph in more detail, how it was obtained, the movement and everything. Very nice. Okay, that's it when it comes to this unboxing and first impressions. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.